Welcome to Curtis Ghost Corner, coming to you from a secret underground base in occupied America. Hi, I'd like to welcome back all you thought criminals back to Curtis Ghost Corner. <laughs> I, I, might, I might have this as a permanent segment. I'm not sure, maybe once a week, once a month. It's called Outrages of the Week. I'm going to pick two here in this video. Just to show you, let me get my sensor button here so I don't have to beep it out later, just how incredibly <laughs> up these people are. Meet the press panels discuss Trump's death being the only way he doesn't run in 2024. Are you people out of your <laughs> minds? Look at these morons. Well, let's take a look what these idiots have to say. This ought to be really interesting. I mean, based on the precedent of recent history, the Republican M.O. in dealing with Donald Trump is fecklessness. And in doing this book, I learned this over and over and over again. And I don't think the oh, revolution is going to be led a by Lindsey book. Graham or Kevin McCarthy or um, Mitch McConnell. And look, they've had the chance to do it over and over and over again. Yeah. If, if he can survive January 6th and for a few days it looked like he wasn't and be where he well, is today. Is this stunning. brings me to this. If he... No, the old Republican Party won't survive if they want to survive. And that's the problem. You libtards and you progressives have been stopping all over the old neocons for years. The Uniparty guys that say, oh, just don't, just don't call me a racist and you can do what you want. Well, those days are over and you don't like it because you can just walk all over them and say whatever you want with no repercussions at all. And now that many of them are fighting back, you don't like it. Well, you know what? Kiss my... Let's listen on. He runs. Will somebody explain to me how he accepts losing? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, a, you know the big, to that that's a big conundrum. Look, I think there's probably maybe a 15% chance he doesn't run. But, but very likely he's in. Seems like all but these people say, told you was death. Right, right. That was the only was answer is death. There is, how the many only, times did you the get only that? The only answer is death. Can you imagine for a minute if this was Fox and they were talking about Obama or Biden or anybody that was a Democrat running for president? The only way you can stop the person from running is if they died. The only thing that will stop them is death. These people are so... I, I can't even tell you. Let's, let's listen to the rest. The plan we have, this is another Republican congressman, a former Republican congressman, I said, look, we have no plan for this except sitting around hoping he dies. Um, and it's again, this, this so book depressing. is conversation. It's all so depressing. But it's also a fun book and it's a great piece. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's... It, it it's a big effing joke to you people. This isn't funny. These clowns make a lot of money. This guy's probably going to make a half a million at least on his book, promoting it on these, these ridiculous MSNBC and NBC and CNN and God knows how many websites he'll be on and podcasts and pushing his book. It's a fun book. Let's talk about Donald Trump dying so he can't run again. Let's have some fun. This doesn't cover under outrages of the week. I don't know what the hell it does. It's, these conversations happen over and over again, and what cast it in such sharp relief and over the last few months is you see what's happening in England, you see what's happening on the, nine, the January 6th commission, the courage that actually does happen in conservative circles yeah. is cast in such sharp relief with the putative leadership of the Republican Party. It is both a fun read, as you said, and absolutely infuriating. Congratulations. Idaho woman 69 battling cancer reports to prison this week for trespassing at Capitol on January 6th. It's a long interview. It's like seven minutes. I won't show you the whole thing. I'll just show you a picture. She just was battling breast cancer just prior to the January 6th uh, speech by President Trump and the protest and basically got pulled in with a lot of people that are going to the Capitol. She went inside the door and even said, to her uh, phone or camera, I didn't want to go this far. She's been doing this for years at the local level. And it's just amazing to me. She covers all kinds of stories locally, uh, you know, sometimes nationally. She figured she'd make a little vacation out of it, see the Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Memorial, maybe the Smithsonian. Let's read on. 
Pat Help Hill, a 69-year-old woman from Idaho who has cancer and no criminal history, has been sentenced to two months in prison by a D.C. judge for breaking, breaching the Capitol on January 6th and will surrender to California authorities on Tuesday. Now, she has to go to the federal prison in California for 60 days. Six people from Idaho have been charged with the January 6th protest, but Hampel's story is especially tragic because of her breast cancer diagnosis. She's also a substance abuse counselor and spent much of her life helping others. She was arrested for trespassing at the Capitol. She pleaded guilty to the charge after her attorney assured her due to her age, cancer diagnosis, and with a clean record, a short probation would be the result of the hearing. That turned out to be bad advice, shocking both Hemp Hill and her attorney. Because this is, this is vindictive. Judge Lampert decided to set an, that an example needed to be made of an elderly cancer victim and sentenced her to 60 days in federal prison beginning on July 12. How is this? It's, it's unbelievable to me. And God thinks you do. If God brings you to do God will, you will get through it. Yeah. It's um, such emotional pain having to go into prison Tuesday. I can barely make it. Yeah, I'll bet she can't. I'll bet she can't. It's, um, it's amazing to me. Let's read on. She was contrite about her sentencing, but the judge was ultimately miffed over another January 6th protester's comments to the press after they were sentenced on a different matter, according to the Gateway Pundit. The judge nailed Hemphill despite her health and clean record. She reports to the federal prison in Dublin, California, to serve her 60 day sentence, according to KTVB. Oh, God. I'm sorry for trespassing, and my apology was real. She didn't really do anything. She actually didn't do anything. Oh, glad, uh, glad Judge Lampert learned his lesson. That while he, he believed Lampert may have been sincere in her apology, he didn't want to repeat of what happened January 6th. Defendant Ann Morgan Lloyd, who appeared on Fox News and appeared to walk back the remorse she had. Yeah, she's pissed. I would be mad, too. I'm on the road heading to California, Dublin prison. I'm very frightened of my strength to remember Christ carry the cross for me. And I'm not going to carry the cross for all. And I am going to carry the cross for all January 6th prisoners. And God, we trust. The leftist media painted her as some kind of villain for supporting President Trump and reporting on the events of the Capitol that day. Remember something, folks. Vilifying people and making them less of the people that you support is a very old trick. And it has serious repercussions. Ask anybody in Europe during the 1930s, early 1940s. 69-year-old woman who had been seen walking down the steps of the Capitol after breaching the building and encouraging other writers to do the same has been sentenced to two months. Oh, gosh. Who had flown to Washington, D.C. from Idaho January 6th to support Donald Trump's effort to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election had pushed through police lines three different times as the crowd outside the Capitol grew increasingly violent. She also encouraged her fellow rioters to push their way inside the building, and she was later seen inside the rotunda town itself, the outlet accused. She said, I went too far. I didn't want to go in this far. She's a self-proclaimed citizen journalist, and she was there to catch Trump on video and hopefully record a piece of history. She found herself caught up in more than she bargained for. I almost went myself, frankly. I stood up for Trump on January 6th and got 60 days in prison. Don't worry about me. God is carrying me through this darkness, and I will see the light again. It's uh, her family encouraged her. It's a long story. I'll go, I'll go through it here, and you can pause the video if you want to read it. I'll get a chance to meet him. I'll be first so I could record him, you know, and Phil recounted. Then I got up front. There's a barrier, and there's, there's police officers, and then there was talking, and within a minute, a man started pushing on the gate and pushing the officers. Everybody have 
I fell, and the officers, they pulled me out of the crowd and put me behind them, so they saved my life that day, and I just ran to another officer. Unbelievable. It's, uh, it, it's incredible to me. No, what happened was there was a police officer at the door. People were coming in and out, and I got this on video. I wanted to get close enough to ask, is this legal? Are people coming in and out with permission? But there's people in front of me, and they shoved me. That's when I asked an officer to help me get back out because they already trampled on me on the steps. I caught my knee, broke my glasses, stepped on my head, pulled out my shoulder. It's just amazing to me. So I asked to take me out, and he did, and that's what I got in trouble for. I broke the law. I was on the other side. I didn't do it on purpose. It wasn't intent, but they were wrong. We were wrong. That was trespassing. Of course, she has to say that. And there you are, number two in my series. Maybe I'll keep it a regular series. Outrages of the week. You know, I think it's an old Star Trek quote. And I'm not calling for violence, so YouTube, don't freak out. This craziness, like, Trump will have to be dead not to run, and Trump will have to be dead to save the Republican Party, and we're just hoping that he dies, and... A 70-year-old woman, almost 70, battling breast cancer. She's probably wearing a scarf on her head because of the chemo. She probably her hair fell out. There's a quote, I believe, of some Star Trek. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Remember that, you morons. Remember that. All you McCarthy, I'm old enough. I wasn't old enough in the 1950s. I was born in 56, but the McCarthy hearings were just before I was born, and I read all about them in school. And this is what's happening here. They're ruining lives. They're putting people on blacklists back then. Today it's called canceling people. Back then it was called a blacklist. Same thing. And it was horrendous then. It's horrendous now. These people suck so bad at what they're doing. And it's institutional people, elected officials, judges, the DOJ, the FBI, people that work for the President of the United States, going after their political enemies through the court system and, and, and threatening jail time and ruining their lives in the prospect, both personally and financially. It's going to come back around to bite you all in the ass. And I hope I live long enough to see it. Until next time, goodbye. And good luck.